Howdy y'all, Caleb here. Got some lists to look at from this past weekend. We're going to look at the top Seraphim lists from tournaments that happened this past weekend. So let's jump right in. This one is from the Salt Lake Open. And <laughs> this one, I like. I'm starting off with this one. This wasn't our best list. We did have a 5-0 list uh, this, this past weekend. But this one is my favorite, I think. This one is from Justin Costello. He came in sixth place. He went 4-1, and one, which normally we'd be looking at the 5-0 and oh list first, but I wanted to do this 4-1 and one list because Justin here, he's, he's a stud right here. He's, a, he's the real hero. Check this out. Right down here at the very bottom, he went 4-1 and one with a Dread Saurian. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. What a, what a player right here going with a Dread Saurian and pulling in a 4-1. and one. Well done. All right, so let's take a look at this list. Uh, we've got Seraphim, Thunder Lizard, obviously. Uh, take What's Theirs is our grand strategy. And Triumph of Inspired. He's five points under. Probably not going to get the Triumph all that often. Um, Engine of the Gods is our general with Prime War Beast and Incandescent Retresses. That helps, you know, if your Engine of the God gets killed, you can bring it back on a four-up roll. Always nice to do because that thing can be tough to kill. Uh, Mount Trait Beast Master give you, you know, extra run. Uh, run shoot and charge or extra attacks once per game so vital i you know that mount trade I, it, it's underrated you know it's it's so versatile if you're in range you're going to use the savage if you need to run and charge you're going to use swift i've used both of them just about every game i've ever put it on the engine of gods or the skink chief just so good uh, any of those kind of things where you can have like a, a you know an option on what you how you want to use it depending on the scenario uh, it's just so much fun. Uh, Skink Priest with Heal. A Slon Star Master with uh, Fusil. And Spell Stellar Tempest. So that Slon is probably going to be staying close as close as possible to that Dread Saurian to give it that buff for the Dread Saurian. Maybe that's why we got Fusil on the Slons. Because it is going to be in a little bit closer range probably. Some Guard. Some Knights. Let's see. what, are the, what Bounty Hunter has the Knights and the Stegodon in it. Okay, nice. Uh, so those knights will do quite well in Bounty Hunters, and the Stegodon's a lot of fun in Bounty Hunters too. And then, oh, we got a unit of Ripperdactyls. Man, what is this? He's got a uh, Dread... I was I was transfixed by the Dread Soaring down there. I just totally even missed the Ripperdactyls. Um, hey, you know, we just we just trashed the Ripperdactyls last week, and now somebody went 4-1 and one with Ripperdactyls in your list. Well done. Uh, we've also got a Bastildon with Solar Engine. And the rest of those units are in that Warlord Battalion. So pretty good. Uh, got an extra artifact out of that. Uh, man, great job. A, a tough list to go 4-1 and one with. But Justin did. Awesome job. Dread Soyan, some Ripper Dactyls. Woo, good stuff. For our second list here, we have the Nashcon Age of Sigmar GT. And we've got some, some big names showing up for this one. You see, you know, Ridge Hanna took it out. He came at, it came in at number one. Ridge is from Season of War. We've seen his name pop up on this, these lists. <laughs> I don't think that was last weekend. Maybe the weekend before where he won a GT also with Seraphon. So, uh, well done, Ridge. I think he's shooting for the, the a top player in Age of Sigmar, but definitely the top Seraphon player in Age of Sigmar right now. Uh, Tyler, we've got some other names on there. Thomas Wan, he's he's a regular you see in tournaments. Vince uh, down there at uh, number eight also bringing in a great score. So a, a pretty big tournament there at NashCon, but Ridge did take it out with a Seraphim. This was an interesting tournament where you got to choose, you brought two lists and you choose which one you want to play. Uh, pretty interesting. I've done one of those before, and it does give you kind of an extra level of strategy. If you bring two separate lists to kind of deal with what you know is out there, some of the major threats, you can kind of answer those things that you see on the board. You know, is, is this a good matchup for Thunder Lizard? Okay, I'm going to lean into that list. Is it a good matchup for Fangs of Sotek? I'm leaning into that list. You know, do I need board presence or do I need, you know, resiliency? Do I need, you know, shooting or do I need, uh, you know... Uh, Teleporting uh, salamanders, so, uh, so some an extra level of strategy there. And Ridge, Ridge does well. He's a good player. So his first list here is Fangs of Sotek, and uh, we've seen this list from him before. This may be the same one that he had won the previous GT with. Uh, 
It is Fangs of Sotek. You got the Slon Star Master with Arcane Tome and Arcane Might. So you're getting some really good casting out of the Slon there. Uh, Skink Star Priest with Hand of Glory. A Skink Priest with Curse. And an Astrolith with the Serpent God Dagger. And then you've, you know, it looks like 50 Skinks and 5 Source Guard there. The Skinks will do awesome work, especially if, what? let's see, what battalion does he have him in for this one? He's got the minimum units in the Expert Conquerors and the 30 block in Expert Conquerors too, okay. So lots of, lots of board control there. Uh, but the real damage from this one is coming from those uh, two blocks of Salamanders to be teleporting them around, killing what you need. Also, it's got the Ark of Sotek uh, bestilled on. A, a tough monster to deal with, especially if you can get that into the right target to screen and uh, pin down something. It will do a great job of that. Purple Sun, of course, is always a great strategy. You know, you, you know, you're gonna see a Purple Sun or a Horror Gast when you got a Slon and an Astralis in your list. Uh, so we do have the Purple Sun and the Horror Gast, great two fantastic endless spells uh, for that list. And that comes in at 1950. It looks like he's probably fishing for that um, that triumph and eight drops. So decently low drops in the meta right now. You'll see a lot of stuff hitting that 10, 12 plus range. His second list, uh, let's see, I think we have it cut out here. Second list is a Thunder Lizard with a Slon having a Tixie Grubs, get those re-rolls and Stellar Tempest. Skink Star Priest with Fusil and Hand of Glory. Skink Priest with Heal. An Astrolith, an Engine with Primorbies, Incandescent Retresses. So all pretty standard stuff. We got some uh, a Celestent Prime in this list. A, a fantastic ally. You'll see that in, I think, another list here in a minute. Um, it, really, it really leans into our Mortal Wound, you know, plinking off the heroes and stuff. Celestent Prime just does a great job of adding to that. And gives a bit of a, a, a backboard control, some teleports for a Thunder Lizard list that you don't normally have. We got some Guard, 10 Skinks, uh, 2 units of Knights. Are those in our Bounty Hunters? They are in Bounty Hunters. Okay, that's good. Knights and Bounty Hunters uh, su supported with a Skink Star Priest, which he's got. Can, can, can do some great, great damage there. Uh, we're still on with Solar Engine, of course, and a Thunder Lizard list. That's always a useful spot. And then a Purple Sun and a Horgast. So... Uh, good stuff there, 1985. Both of these are great lists. Uh, one has, you know, those salamanders. If, if you're going up against a very elite army, you probably want those salamanders. If you're going against something that that does a lot of two damage, then you might select this, uh, this Thunder Lizard list just to negate half their damage. Um, it's a, still a good list in its own right. So uh, well done, Ridge. I couldn't I couldn't figure out how you know which list he picked for which matchups. It didn't it doesn't show that in BCP. But I bet you Season of War will have a rundown on his his GT win again. And so maybe they'll they'll give us some insight there. Also from this one, we had uh, Thomas Wan down at number seven. He was playing a Seraphim list and he went four and one. A very good player. Um he's he's kind of the you'll see him <laughs> he's like a hired hand. He's like a mercenary. He flies around and plays in a ton of tournaments. And always does very well. So this uh, first list here, and this is a list that, you know, he may have borrowed this from one of his Harambe heroes, or maybe one of the Harambe heroes borrowed this from him. I'm not sure, but you've seen this list pop up a couple times. I think Gavin was playing this previously. But this is a Thunder Lizard list, and it has Prime, Krog, Astrolith, Engine. You know, basically all of those are helping the Mortal Wound output. And then you've got these three Bastilodons with Arc of Sotek down at the bottom. And those are great screens. They're also, you're going to be throwing about 60 dice uh, doing mortal wounds. But really, you're using this for like board control, screening, and uh, tanking. You know, that's, what is that, 36 wounds on a one-up save? <laughs> so pr pretty, pretty hard for some armies to chew through. Uh, we got some guards, some skinks, and a couple of endless spells. The Horgast and the Cogs. Cogs are great with Croak. Uh, you, you pop those on the croak, and that way you're going to be pulsing his spammable spell through your. Let's see, what does he have that he can cast it through? He doesn't have anything to cast it through because um, his his engine of the god doesn't have arcane tome or anything. But you'll be pushing it out 16 inches from croak with the astrolith. So position it well, and you're going to be pushing those spells in a pretty good area, um, especially with cogs giving you all those rerolls. 
His second list, <laughs> man, I really want to know if he actually ran this and won some games with it. This is a Kotal's Claw list, and he's got four Carnosaurs. Uh, he's also got Croak and the Astrolith, and then some Knights and a unit of Guard. Not a whole lot. I think I may have cut off the rest of that list, but it wasn't a whole lot to write home about. But he had four Carnosaurs and Lord Croak. Man, I really hope he ran that list in at least one of those games. Maybe, maybe that was his loss. Because uh, you don't really, you don't often see four Carnosaurs on the board at the same time. But if anybody could win with that, it's probably Tom, who's won with some some off meta lists in the past. So. <laughs> Uh, so, so, <laughs> four and one with three Ark of Sotek, Bastillons in one list, or four Carnosaurs in the other list. <laughs> What's good anymore? Who knows? <laughs> uh, and for our last list here, we have a GT at Capital City Bloodbath. Not sure where this one was. It didn't have much in the description on BCP. Uh, but we had it number five was Danik. And he had five wins, or she, I'm not, I'm not sure who this is, but Danik had five wins, but they played six games. So that's uh, five out of six. Hey, that's still awesome. Six games in one weekend. Woo, that's a grind. That's a grind. But well done. Lost the first game, then went on a winning streak of five games after that. And I like this list. Uh, this, was, this was a pretty cool list. I like this one a lot. Uh, this one's in Fang of Sotek. And it's got the grand strategy of the Astro Matrix. All right, taking the 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 Starborn grand strategy. I like that. I, I think it's a good one if you're going um, Starborn. This is uh, we've talked about this in a previous video, but keeping a wizard on <laughs> a line of for, you know, there's a, gonna be a line from one corner of the board to the other, kind of making an X across the board. You got to have a wizard on that at the end of the game. They can't have a wizard on it at the end of the game. So. A fairly easy one to accomplish unless you just come across a really bad matchup, maybe. Or just get tabled, which you're not going to get your grand strategy anyway. Anyway, anyway, to the list. Uh, Slon Starmasters are general with Arcane Might and Serpent God Dagger. <laughs> I did find this an interesting choice. Uh, I mean, Serpent God Dagger, you're putting that on the Slon. Um, so an interesting choice there. You don't normally get the Slon into melee, and that's where you got to use that one. It's also got, let's see, Celestial, the two spell Celestial Equilibrium and Stellar Tempest uh, there from the Arcane Might. We've also got a Stegodon with Skink Chief with Cloak of Feathers, a fantastic choice for the Skink Chief. And it gives it extra movement, four extra inches of movement, flies, and it's minus one to hit. Just all wrapped up in one nice little artifact. Uh, Skystreak Bow, obviously, and the Mount Trait Starborn, so it can do some mortal wounds when it's in range there in melee. What I like to see, you know, when I see a Fangs list with a Stegonon Chief, I'm looking down, how many skinks do they have? And he's got two big blocks of 30 skinks, all with Moonstone Clubs. So that's a great, great melee combo. I'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, we've also got an Astrolith Bear to pump up our Slon and give some Mortal Wound Aura, uh, a ward save Aura to everybody that's around him on deployment. We do have a two Skink Star Priest with Hand of Glory and Extend Astro Matrix. How do we get extra two spells there? We have the additional enhancements down here. Um, we have an extra spell and an extra artifact, which we got the maybe that's just a maybe they're just a duplication typo for one of those guys. But unless maybe is there a way to get both of those guys extra spells that I'm missing? I'm thinking only one of them should have an extra spell. Anyway, uh, Skink Priest has Curse, a great little choice there. Who's our Skink Priest buff? And they're gonna bust any of this uh, buff any of the Skinks there. I was. I'm, in Thunder Lizard, I'm always looking down to see if there's a Bacillon. Um, our battle line, we've got 30 Skinks with Bolt Spitters and Moonstone Clubs. Both of those big units of 30 have those. And four asterisks, let's see, they're in Bounty Hunters. So <laughs> those Skinks, I, you know, I don't think I've done a video on, on Skinks in Bounty Hunters yet. We need to do that because the damage can be absolutely absurd. Because you're already getting two shots with each of these Skinks. And then you're getting two hits in melee with them, which the Moonstone Clubs aren't great, but they the Skinks take buffs, and their buffs last from hero phase to hero phase. And so you're getting all of those same buffs in shooting in melee. But the Stegodon Skink Chief has a command point that he can give to him that adds to that um, 
attacks. So now they're all going to have three attacks in melee with those Moonstone Clubs. So they can they can be little murder machines in melee, especially in Bounty Hunters. If you can get them into another Galician Veteran unit, they're going to be doing two damage <laughs> for each of those. All of a sudden, those Skinks are terrifying. They're going to be doing Mortals. Let's say you get Curse Off and the Star Priest uh, Staff of Venom there. They're going to be doing Mortals on hits and wounds, and then the damage is two. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, so lots of Skinks. We've also got another two units of Skinks there in the Expert Conquerors, along with the... What are the Knights? And the Knights are in one of the Warlord Battalions, along with the Chameleon Skinks. Cool. So some board control there. Lots of, lots of bodies. This is 132 wounds. That's a lot for a Seraphim list these days. A lot of times we're a little bit lighter on wounds. I do like the knights. They they take the buffs well from Star Priest. They're a little bit better in in um, Thunder Lizard side of things. Coalesce, Codal's Claw, but they're not bad here in Fangs of Sotek. Um, not really optimized in Fangs of Sotek, but they can they can take those buffs once all the other stuff is gone. They're a little bit tougher than some of these other battle lines that he's got in there. So, uh, Purple Sun and a Horgast. You see, <laughs> you kind of see a theme developing here. That Horgast is is a great uh, spell turn one, and then Purple Sun get that out turn two. Or if you if you're if you're in the right position, you get Purple Sun out, and then Horgast from one of the uh, other priests you got here. Uh, so 1995, 135 wounds. I think it was about 10 drops. So pretty great. Uh, lots and lots of bodies, and he played this over six games and won five of them. Nicely done. Well done. All right, that's our list for today. If if uh, you had a GT that you played in and I, I somehow missed it or it's not in BCP, let us know in the comments how it went. And I think tomorrow we'll have a breakdown. I did a small tournament, just a three-day tournament. Or three-day. That would be tough. A three-game tournament. How about that? Uh, and we'll be breaking that down tomorrow. See how I did. <laughs> see if I can, if I can uh, do as good as some of you guys doing. Hint. Probably not. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see y'all later.